Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and once again we have JJ here in the studio, also known as Dr. Asus. How are you doing today, JJ? I'm doing all right, boss. Thank you for asking. Well, thank you for coming in today and uh, we've already talked a bit about the uh, new Z87 boards from uh, Asus and these are going to be supporting Intel's new Haswell processors, which will now be known as Intel's fourth generation core processors. We talked about what is known as the ASUS mainstream boards. We've also called them the channel boards in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you guys want to check that out, we have a full video on those. Those are featuring new color scheme. And we showed briefly these two mini ITX boards there. But now we're going to focus in a little bit more on those. So just to put this in perspective, we also have the Z87 Deluxe out right over there. And that is one of the most feature-packed boards in uh, the channel lineup from ASUS. So JJ, how does one take a full ATX board like that, shrink it down to the size of one of these mini ITX boards, and still maintain the level of functionality that ASUS uh, so desires to have in their boards? Uh, that's a loaded question. It's a really hard one. Uh, yeah. To be honest, you know, when we try to go about doing what we've done in the last couple of generations with our small form factor boards, I think that we've really set the bar in terms of trying to outright take on the challenge of saying, no compromise at really trying to give you everything you could ask. Um, you know, with the previous generation, you guys saw that we tried to even buck the perception of that we weren't able to do advanced power delivery solutions by just going vertical, right, and mm -hmm. introducing a fully um, independent daughter board uh, power delivery implementation that allowed us to go ahead and essentially have the same overclocking capability and power output as what we would have on a full ATX motherboard. So, um, you know, it puts a lot of pressure on our design team, but ultimately, you know, we try to find you know, where the interest and where the want is from the community and for you guys as users and say, you know, how can we execute on that, right? How can we actually make that happen? And uh, ultimately, if it's, a, if it's a lot of engineering and a lot of time and effort, then so be it. But ultimately, we're able to bring in really amazing product in terms of the, the functionality, the feature set, and having it be in a really impressive form factor, which allows you to have some, you know, some really cool setups, you know, whether it's a, a, small, a small form factor oriented land box, um, you know, it could be a Steam big picture box, it could be a small editing uh, rig, you know, it could be uh, a lot of different systems. It could just even be that you want a primary desktop, but you want it in a smaller footprint um, with a tight level of integration um, and just key points of expansion. Um, and I think that definitely you're going to see that we've even expanded on what we did from the previous generation and even taking it further for this uh, for this Z87 Mini ITX platform. And I personally, I've noticed a, a big push towards smaller form factor systems. You know, the, you want it to be small to fit on your desktop, whether it's saving space or smaller systems, just thanks to the advance of technology that's allowed things like heat sinks to get smaller. You don't need quite as much thermal dissipation, stuff like that going on. Uh, what would you say, going back maybe a generation or two on Mini ITX boards, were there features that you wanted to integrate then that you've now been able to integrate with the, the advance of, of the design? Um, you know, part of it is definitely that there has been a refinement within some of the components that you're selecting. Um, but, you know, we've been actually forebearers for the Mini ITX standard since it's actually been defined as a specification. So we've been making them for multiple generations in really interesting and diversified ways. Um, so I don't know that necessarily inherently just based on time that we've done more, but I think that what we have begun to see is that you're now having an acceptance to consider a high performance small form factor based solution. Mm. Um, you know, even within our micro ATX category, we kind of set the bar for setting what a micro ATX motherboard was when we first did boards like the Rampage 2 Gene. Mm. Um, and everybody was like, X58 and micro ATX? Um, that doesn't make any sense, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that we've tried to set that same tone at saying, hey, you know, you can have no compromise, right? You can fundamentally get every single key specification that you're looking for within this smaller form factor. And we're going to really try to not uh, restrict you in terms of the level of functionality, performance, or quality that you're going to get just because it's a smaller solution. Ultimately, like always, I think what we're most interested in trying to do is making sure that the board that we're giving you um, is about serving that specific segmentation's need and want. Mm -hmm. So for people that want a small form factor box, regardless of what it might be ended up utilized for, like I said, it could be content creation, it could be for productivity, it could be for gaming, you know, it could be HDPC, it could be whatever you want it to be. Um, you know, our goal is just to try to give you the best possible option that we can do, and I think we've been able to do that. Um, and like you said, it hasn't been easy, um, you know, and of course, through multiple years of, you know, refinement, um, and through research, we've been able to execute it down to what we feel is really the best product that we've ever done from a mini ITX design. Um, and, you know, the other part is also continually getting that feedback from the community mm -hmm. to make sure that we can continue to improve on those small points that help to really give you that next layer of uh, 
kind of functionality. All right. So uh, those are some nice general uh, thoughts about uh, design philosophy as well as uh, the challenge, just generally speaking, of uh, fitting everything you need into a form factor this small. Uh, now we have two mini ITX boards right here, and they're all featuring the new gold color scheme, which you guys might be able to get a nice close look at. Uh, and of course, uh, apart from the gold, you have primarily black in the background. Uh, this is the plus that I'm holding right now, the uh, Z87i plus. Actually, H. Us. H, I'm sorry, this is the H, H87, mm -hmm. uh, the H87 chipset, and then we have the Z87 chipset over here Correct. on the Deluxe. So, so uh, two different kind of segmentations at play here. And actually uh, brings up a good question. What would the difference here be, be between using the H87 chipset versus the uh, Z87? Pretty similar to the previous generation is that your main focus here is going to be for users that are looking for stock level of operation. Okay. So this is going to be more focused for people that are looking for a small form factor box, focused at productivity, um, you know, media-centric usages, maybe a small, um, you know, Soho type of environment. Maybe they're mm -hmm. looking to run like a headless uh, Windows home server or, um, um, you know, maybe a, like a, an Ubuntu box. It could be for multiple types of uh, configurations, but pretty much the focus is more towards power efficiency, you know, but great IPC performance at the Intel platform, the chips it's able to provide, some rich expansion in terms of the connectivity options. So you still get up to six out of six G ports. Um, you're still going to go ahead and get your enhanced USB 3 connectivity. So you still get a lot of flexibility in here, uh, but we're distilling it down for somebody that's a little bit more focused at what their usage model is going to be and without necessarily kind of it being more in focus of what an enthusiast is going to be interested relative to not only the expansion but to overclocking in relation which you're only going to have on the Z series chipset. So this is like I said really targeted at users that want ASUS quality, good functionality, good feature set but are looking to keep things a bit more conservative in terms of the overall performance. All right and uh, this is sort of a quick look at the general layout and uh, overview of the board of course socket is right there in the middle uh, you got some dim slots over here, so you can set up your dual channel memory, DDR3. Uh, and then you got your power delivery, so a full size 24 pin as well as a 4 pin supplemental power connector. Uh, we have fan headers on the board. This one actually is featuring how many? I see two here. Two fan headers. Two fan uh, headers. You know, right in a basic there. configuration like that, you're pretty much only just going to have a single chassis fan and then a CPU fan for the primary seat. Excuse me, a CPU cooler for the primary uh, CPU itself. Okay, so uh, this would be uh, very suitable for just about any general general purpose computing application that you might need. Mm -hmm. And then of course we have the deluxe, and the deluxe features the Z87 chipset, as JJ already told us. And um, this one is going to be. This pro I would say maybe more towards the actual uh, parallel with uh, the full-size boards. This yeah. one you have uh, the daughter board that you already mentioned, uh, originally introduced with the Z77i uh, that you guys uh, came out with uh, in the last generation, uh, and then we have which is right there, and this is pr pretty much all of your power delivery components for the CPU. Correct. I mean, you've got your MOSFETs, your drivers, and your inductors all in there. You can see the inductors directly there at the bottom. Of course, uh, we're messaging there our dual intelligent processors design because this board features the same high-end performance, uh, top quality power componentry, and even our f exclusive four-way optimization technology. So very much in the same way that the Deluxe is giving you that rich level of functionality, performance, and component quality, you're going to get this just in a distilled down small form factor version. Um, you know, when you take a look at the total connectivity, um, you know, some of the most impressive points you're going to see here is this board features six SATA 6G ports on it, right? Uh, even compared to the last generation, we have the best mini ITX board that you could get on the market, and it was only four ports, so this generation we expanded it to six. Um, so that's pretty crazy. You're essentially having, you know, the maximum amount of ports that you could have. So if you work with a, a really nice uh, small form factor chassis, um, that gives you as much really extensive connectivity as you could be looking for from a storage side. You know, in terms of the rest of the connectivity, it's super rich. I mean, if we flip it over in terms of the back I.O., I mean, you can see here that you've got four USB 2 ports. You've got the DVI port. You have a clear CMOS. You have the USB BOSS flashback button. So, of course, that's that great and easy way of updating the UEFI on the board. No CPU, no memory, no graphics card, just PSU standby power. You've got display port. You've got HDMI. You've got an optical output. This board also features the same ALC 1150 with the DTS Ultra 2 software package. So it has DTS Connect. So you can do live, real-time, multi-channel re-encoding through the optical output. You've got there six uh, USB 3 ports on the back, so that's pretty nutty in itself, right? So you guys have actually added a couple more, right? Because you have uh, a USB 3.0 header, which is on the board right so there. So that's going to give you an additional two. So that gives you a total of eight USB 3 ports on a mini ITX board. And in addition, of course, the board still maintains our exclusive technologies like USB 3 Boost and USB Charger Plus. Um, so you get those additional value adds. You get the updated Intel i-Series NIC on there with the network i-Control software. 
the Wi-Fi module on the previous generation, we were the first board vendor to ever roll out dual band on our previous generation uh, small form factor board. This one, we've upped it and we've gone from dual band a to 11 n to dual band a to 11 ac Oh, wow. So okay. you've got AC and Bluetooth 4.0 already built onto the board. So, I mean, that's just even more spec in terms of having it just straight integrated into the board. And especially if you're considering using this from a, a small form factor uh, gaming perspective or maybe an HTPC or even as a media server or as actually a professional small form factor server, um, having that wireless being able to serve as a repeatable access point or having it be AC allows you to have a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. at even transferring very large files because of the enhanced throughput that you have uh, with the AC controller. And then, of course, you got your standard analog audio connectivity. So, I mean, when you take a look at the whole that you have that complete high performance VRM daughter board, you've got still the same FP 5K rated capacitors on the motherboard, mm -hmm. the high performance inductors, the six out of six G ports, even nice touches where you can see right here we have an entirely new uh, Q, um, uh, what's called a Q, <coughs> Q-clip retention mechanism um, is it makes it even easier so that when you install the graphics card, even with this in this form factor space, you're still going to essentially have that pop up so that if you wanted to go ahead and have access to the card, you could go ahead and depress that down and pop the card out, which is critical, especially when you're working within a very tight chassis configuration uh, for mini ITX, where normally, if you didn't have this type of specialized kind of attention to detail, the card would actually be stuck in you and have an easy way of being able to take it out. One of, one of the biggest challenges when you're building in a very small form factor, especially mini ITX, just this was actually one of the first things I noticed when when we popped this board out. I was like, oh, it's got a little arm there, and it puts it up right there next to the memory slots. And if you have a graphics card installed right there, it's going to be blocking most of your little mechanisms. So I really like that. It's a very thoughtful touch. Uh, I like all the space saving features. I like that you guys have the Wi-Fi integrated, so you don't need to worry about a wireless card. Uh, You're mentioning also four four pin fan connectors. That's, yeah, right that's there. the next point. I mean on our previous generation board we only offered two fan headers. So this was insane to be able to put in the trace work and the layout work required to be able to have four four pin PWM fan headers. That's very impressive. I mean even with a high performance mini ITX enclosure at something like the Bit Phoenix Prodigy, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to have four fan headers all connected. And in a small form factor that's pretty much going to be all you need and then you don't need to worry about wedging in the fan controller. Or you don't have to worry about anything. anything like I mean, you could have, even if you're using like a closed loop solution, one for the pump, one for the primary fan, and then still two for chassis fans. I mean, what more could you really ask for? I mean, it's it's great. But on top of that, it's not just the number of headers. These are also now in even improvement from our previous generation. We give you the full Fan Expert 2 technology. So nice. we give you the three pin control and the four pin control for every single one of those headers. That's fully adjustable within the actual UEFI adjustable within the actual, UV, excuse me, the software environment in AI Suite 3. And like I said, if you use the four-way optimization technology, it'll go ahead and do everything for you. Overclock it, tune your fans, do the power optimization, adjust power to those supplemental uh, controllers on the board and make the power adjustments. So really impressive. And I mean, when you consider even some of the other attention to detail points that sometimes don't even come to mind, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've really prided ourselves in that it takes us more work, but even the spacing between the actual CPU socket here and the primary by 16 express slot, if you've noticed, we don't put the socket directly above the PCI Express slot. Mm -hmm. That's critical because if you actually want to use a larger type CPU heatsink, especially maybe like a downward firing CPU heatsink design, there would be no space. It essentially would impact directly with the top PCI Express slot. Mm -hmm. So some of the other competitors out there in the marketplace uh, have a more restrictive design because when you have it directly above the PCI Express slot and you want to use a higher performance GPU and a high performance uh, CPU cooler, you're going to have an immediate mechanical conflict. In this type of configuration, you really have a huge amount of flexibility that you can put much higher performing and different types of um, heat sink and thermal solution configurations on there, but without impacting your GPU expansion. All right, so um, I think that just about wraps it up for this one. Uh, we did also want to point out, this was something that we had left out of the mainstream uh, board, which is the actual uh, antenna for the Wi-Fi that ships with the device, Correct. Uh, which is pretty cool because it's kind of got like a transformer thing going on. You can flip it around different configurations. Yeah, you essentially have three different um, aspects in terms of how you can adjust it or rotate it so that you can maximize signal reception and enhance signal throughput. Um, and of course, it's full SMA-based antenna, so it allows for flexibility. You got some nice corded length so that you can position it in the ideal position. And we still maintain the magnetic base, so you can go ahead and fix it to the top or the side of your chassis. Very nice. And uh, I think that is going to about wrap it up for yeah. this overview. All right, so uh, once again, we've been taking a closer look at the uh, H87, not Z87, H87i Plus uh, Mini-ITX board, as well as the Z87i 
Deluxe, both from Asus, both of course available on Newegg.com. So check out the link below if you would like to uh, head over to Newegg and, and check out these products over there, maybe read the spec sheets or whatnot. We've been talking with JJ from Asus, and thanks again for stopping by today, JJ. Thank you for having me. A little stumble there, but uh, thanks to all you guys for watching. If you would like to see more tech videos, of course, you can find them on our Newegg TV YouTube channel, as well as additional interviews with JJ here going over all the mainstream boards, as well as all of the uh, Z87 platform goodness that is currently launching in a, in, in a just, just deluge of videos, but hopefully you guys enjoy them all. Also, don't forget to like the video if you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you all next time on Newegg TV.